Vitro is a family company that started off as a shop fitting company in um, the early 40s and 50s. And then um, after an important meeting with Charles and Ray Eames, the founder, Billy Fehlbaum, decided that he also wants to do furniture. It grew very organically because um, the founding family, who was originally from Basel, also owned land on the German side of the border. So it was very clear that if they wanted to start um, an industrial business and production, it was much easier to do it, of course, on the land that they owned already. So that was um, how Weil am Rhein became the basis of the campus. It was not chosen because it seemed strategically a good position. After all, it showed to be placed very well because to some people it seems to be at the end of the world and to others, especially Europeans, it's actually in the middle of everywhere because it takes four hours to get to Milan, it takes three hours by train to um, Paris and it's just in the heart of it. So it's easy, easily um, reachable from everywhere. So also from these centers that you mentioned, it's quite easy to be reached from, from Holland as well as Italy or Germany. And that's probably why um, also, Vitra as a campus has created another hub. Well, I can say that we, we certainly want to be uh, a design center, but not only, uh, not only for Germany, but also, of course, for, for Switzerland, because it's bordering directly onto Switzerland, and the next city is, is Basel as a Swiss city, so we really consider ourselves to be part of this metropolitan region of, of, of Greater Basel. In 81 there was a huge fire on the campus which destroyed um, I think more than 60 or 70 percent of the production site. So it was uh, of course the necessity to build an on-site um, fire station because of the fire which um, now is not anymore in use but um, he called Zahar Deed to do that and it was her first uh, building actually realized and um, so it went on and on and on, all the way to the Vitra house where we are now, that um, it was never, let's say, many years backwards, clear that uh, a Vitra house is going to be built. But when in 2005 the home collection started, and it has been growing ever since, it became um, necessary to build a home for the home collection. So that's when the flagship store uh, idea came up, and that's when the necessity of a Vitra house as a showroom came up. So it's kind of an ongoing um, plan. And that's why these big names of architects come in before they became kind of the world stars in architecture. The Vitra Design Museum was founded in uh, 1989 uh, by Rolf Fehbaum and Alexander von Fegesack. And uh, yeah, has grown ever since. Started out with two people and now we're about 40 or 50 um, presenting exhibitions here but also pretty much all over the world um, sending them around, touring them. Um, also collecting of course, we have a, quite, quite a great collection of industrial furniture design, um, organizing uh, educational programs, student workshops um, here as well as in uh, southern France. Well I think the the original idea was um, or really to start at the very beginning was to have this Gary building here and to have it as a more or less of a, a private showcase. Um, and uh, the story goes that when it was uh, opened or on, on the opening night that this idea came up to actually have it as a, as a public um, museum. And um, from the start I think the idea was to um, promote design, educate, on design, and I think that's, this is still true today. And uh, th that, that's, an, that's an approach we certainly have here at the museum to say, or not to say, uh, not to treat design as, as art. Um, I think there's other design museums that still do that. They just put a, a chair on a pedestal and say, yeah, just look at it, this is a piece of art and that's it. And I think for, for, for me or for our museum, that's, that's not enough. We want to show um, why why we select these things, why we speak about them, why we speak about these designers, why we think they're interesting, and that, that may be, of course, aesthetic reasons, um, but that may also be uh, technological or constructive reasons, uh, why we think that is an interesting solution, how a piece reflects certain technological um, developments, how uh, furniture or 
architecture may also reflect uh, or, or speak of certain uh, socio-cultural um, developments. Um, so there's so much interesting stories connected to, to these pieces um, um, and that, that really has, has to be told, um, I think. What may have changed a bit over the course of these 20-something uh, years is um, that the, the focus has, has widened. Exhibitions get the more interesting, the, the more different types of exhibits you have. And so if some, someone has been doing furniture and architecture, you get the models, you get the furniture, um, you get interesting photos of installations and so on. So um, that's, uh, that's why that was one of our focuses. And then of course, as a museum, you have to, um, uh, you, of course, you also want to address a, a large number of, of people have a, a possibly wide audience and we've found again and again that these monographic exhibitions where you have an, a name that rings a bell pulls in people of course uh, much much more easily than maybe a theme which yeah that isn't as clear at the first one. Vitra Works has no in-house designers, which is not so um, different to other companies nowadays. It has always been like that, though. Which also means that, of course, when you select a designer, you really have to be sure about the collaboration and about the, especially the relationship you manage to build up with this person, because it's not uh, just one shot. Um, already the development of one product takes many years. So if you think about the vegetal chair, it took uh, more than four years. Um, in average, it is about two to three years that something is being developed together. And if you don't match somehow, everything becomes more difficult and there's not, never going to be a long-term relationship. Only after years you start learning each other, you start understanding each other, you understand, um, you know, if um, the personal thing that somebody never says no, but the no is somewhere in the detail, for example. So it, it's kind of building up a friendship. The more you know each other, the longer you know each other, the better the work is also going to be. And that's, um, let's say, one of the most important parts also of the collaborations that Feature has with the external designers. Finding a designer and starting to work on a project is always investing a lot of money and taking a huge risk. Because it's not only the time spent and the effort and the manpower and so on, but it's also then that you choose to do an injected molded plastic chair, which at the end will cost very little in order to sell well. But the machine is a huge investment. So let's say um, as an average, um, the, the mold for a plastic chair costs about 200,000 euros already. So doing this investment, you really have to be sure that the product is cool. So even before that, you really need to be sure that the collaboration with the designer will go to an end that everybody can be satisfied with. I think design is about um, uh, shaping products, developing products, but also about um, shaping the environment. And if it's possible, but I think that's the, the, the tough part, uh, also trying to develop larger systems that something may be, may be part of. I think that the, the, almost the, the more interesting idea is of design is to think it as, as broadly as possible. Even though on the other hand, you find again and again, if you, if you look at the, the careers of designers, they need, of course, a client to survive. They need their clients who commission them and who pay for it. And that's, most of the time, um, it's about products. It ends up be, being about products. It's part of an evolution. It will never stop that we design chairs. So within this evolution then, as I said, the survival of the fittest, there's always the species which is better than the other, which is going to emerge. The, the weaker ones or the less interesting ones will die out or, you know, 
um, be this um, be destroyed or forgotten about after some time and that keeps also up why um, you can never say that all the chairs are only those all the good chairs are only those chairs from the past there is always going to be good design in the future as well because it's then going to win in the race of the survival of the future.